House of the Dragon Episode 4 Ending Explained The most recent episode of the show was a really interesting one. It was an intimate episode in many ways, in the sense that we witnessed Rhaenyra and Daemon form a bond of closeness like no other, whilst also seeing how relationships, duty, love, loyalty and desire make up a huge part of what it takes to ascend the Iron Throne and all that surrounds it. So with that, I thought I'd recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from episode 4 of the show. So let's get into it. Here is House of the Dragon episode 4 ending explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The episode started off with the very thing that episode 4 centred around. The act of being together. In this sense, it was the merging of two houses in order to be the strongest of them all, and for the next generation to have the Targaryen reign. So far in the series, we've seen Rhaenyra being opposed to the very idea of marrying somebody for the sake of duty or tradition. And this goes as far back as episode 1 when she was speaking with her mother. We saw that this was still something that was embedded within her as she didn't take on any of the suitors that were arranged for her. And she cut her tour short by two months and returned to King's Landing much to the King's disappointment. As they were returning, we witnessed Daemon riding in on his dragon where the title of the episode got its name, King of the Narrow Sea. Following the battle that we witnessed in episode 3 and the slaughtering of the crab feeder, he was proclaimed as King of the Narrow Sea. We saw he was met with a cold response upon first arriving, but we then saw a drastic change in emotions from the king, where he now respected him, welcomed him, and was treating him like a brother again, almost reminiscing over times from the past, despite the fact that he banished him from the kingdom long ago. When we saw Daemon enter, there was a lot of focus on the way that Rhaenyra was looking at her uncle and it was that of an impressive nature by the actions that he committed, and the way that he carried himself. A way that she didn't look at any of her suitors moments before. There was also a strong focus on the chain that was around her neck, and it was the very one that Damon gave to her in that very room in episode 1, showing that she had kept a hold of it and that it held significant value to her. Later on in the episode, we saw a map in Rhaenyra's room, and Damon and her both snuck out into the city after hours in disguise, where we saw Rhaenyra experience the world in a way that she never had before. Seeing people not treating her like a royal and being amongst the regular folk was almost like an out-of-body experience for her. It seemed as though the trip was done deliberately by Damon to poison Rhaenyra's mind. When the street performers were doing a show around who would be next in line to the throne, we saw Damon looking over at her as the crowd erupted with boos in showing the lack of respect and the not wanting of her to become the queen. By exposing her to how the people feel, it would likely corrupt her mind and change her perception of the people that she'll one day be leading. The role of duty was an interesting theme in this episode, and how it was paired up with Alicent. The past few episodes, we were made to believe that she was the very person who, alongside Otto, was on board with the scheming that was taking place. But we saw this time round a real empathetic side to her, and the understanding of what Rhaenyra was going through in not wanting to be married to somebody and to be used as a way of producing heirs. This was the very thing that Alicent was feeling and going through. The staring off into blank space, the lingering shot of her carrying her newborn daughter Helena whilst she was crying in the night and the look of her wanting to give up, along with the blank expression that she held and reluctantness to go to the king during the night when he called for her. She was the very thing that Rhaenyra didn't want to turn into, and Alicent even stated herself that people don't view her as Lady Alicent anymore, but that of the Queen. So an identity crisis is something else that she was also undergoing. For the first time, I actually felt for the character, as it truly seemed like she didn't want to be in the position that she was in. But she was carrying out her duty, even though it was destroying her life. But it was what the realm and her father expected. She was kind to the king when needed, especially when tending to his wounds. But outside of that, you could see the discomfort and pain behind her eyes. As the king and the queen were partaking in courting each other at the late hour where Alicent was reluctant to do so, we had the haunting scene of her being dead behind the eyes whilst it was happening, briefly smiling when the king acknowledged her and then returning to being absent. Intertwined with this, we had the scene of Damon taking the princess to a brothel where we saw them partake in intimate actions towards each other. The Targaryens do have an ancestral nature and it's long been a part of their heritage, but Damon knew what he was doing in carrying out what he did. However, we did see him stop abruptly. I don't know whether this showed a side to him that made him realise that what he was doing was wrong, or it could have been a way of manipulating Rhaenyra and making her not feel good at that moment as he abandoned her. As later on in the episode, we did see Daemon being open and upfront to the king about what he did, and it not phasing him. 
and asking for her hand in marriage, to which the king denied and banished Damon again. So I'm unsure of where the stopping of the situation sits. We saw Rhaenyra return home during the night and a sense of duty came into play again. We saw Sir Kristen Cole being called into her room and they partook in being intimate with each other. However, you could see Kristen questioning whether or not he should be doing it. The slow putting down of his armor and the lack of excitement on his face in the build-up is what was telling me this. I feel as an audience we've been led to believe that something was brewing, but the actual execution of it made me question if it was something that he even wanted. Even how he was acting afterwards was leaning towards that. Following this, we saw the child that was waiting outside of the brothel approach Otto Hightower and inform him of what he saw, that of Damon and Rhaenyra together. We saw the king getting informed of the news and his reaction being that of anger, rage and disappointment but somewhat composure following him finding out in later scenes. The gossip could be the very thing that would make it hard for Rhaenyra to marry a lord, as they wouldn't want somebody that had engaged in activities, especially with somebody in their family. Alicent approached Rhaenyra where she informed her of the gossip, to which Rhaenyra denied it and even swore in her mother's name that nothing happened between herself and Daemon. I thought it was really interesting that she did that. She cared for her mother deeply, and her lying on her name is something that strikes me as a change in the character. What occurred the previous night with being exposed to the world, the events with Damon and also Kristen changed Rhaenyra, and I think we'll see a different side to her moving forward. In the final 10 minutes of the episode, we saw the king approach Rhaenyra and inform her that he was aware of what happened and that she'll now marry Laenor Valerian, call his son as a way of ensuring that no damage come to the name of Targaryens, a way of solving the political headache of Laenor wedding the son of the Sea Lord of Bravos, which would lead to them gaining more power, and also as a way of repairing amends between himself and Corlys. These two individuals' wedding would ensure that the power remained within the Targaryens and they'd continue to reign for a further generation, due to the shared Valerian blood that they hold. We also saw the moment where the king was heating up the Valerian dagger, and the line, From my blood come the prince that was promised, and his will be the song of ice and fire. This was something that was spoken from Aegon I and referenced about his reign and a prophecy. Rhaenyra agreed to marry Laenor as long as the king were to remove Otto Hightower as the hand. She spelled out exactly what Otto had been doing and he finally saw through his scheming and plans and removed him as the second most powerful person in the realm. Due to understanding that Otto had personal gains and motives in the well-orchestrated plan that was being carried out. In episode 1, we saw him get Alison to go and comfort the king following his wife's death. And now the repercussions are being felt by both Alison and Otto. Alicent is miserable with her life, and Otto was stripped of his title. The final shot that we got was of Rhaenyra being given a drink that would rid her of any consequences of the actions that were carried out with Damon. Nobody is aware of what happened with Kristen, so he's off the hook for now. But if she's going to take the drink, that's a different matter. I thought episode 4 was a really good one. It was slower in pace, intimate in nature and execution, and showed the power of companionship, courting, and duty when affiliated with power. The king is looking weaker, he's lost fingers, he's got marks all over his body, and he's clearly suffering and it's gotten worse. So I'm intrigued to see how long he has left in him, especially considering we have a time jump coming up soon. Rhaenyra has changed her attitude and her care for the realm, but she still wants to ascend the Iron Throne as we heard of how she still fears Aegon being named heir. With Daemon now banished again, just like the end of episode 1, I'm intrigued to see what he's going to get up to next. The impending threat of Otto has been taken down a peg, but I fear that the king keeping his enemy closer was probably a better situation, as now he could be out there tainting the years and minds of the Westerosi people. It's going to be interesting to see where this goes. So, there you have it. House of the Dragon Episode 4 Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you want to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review next, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of episode 4? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.